Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema here to review Connecting Rooms, the one and only film directed by Franklin Gollings, uh, which will be available on Blu-ray courtesy of Kino Lorber on April 21st, 2020. Uh, so of course the, the real notable elements of Connecting Rooms are its two headliners, uh, Betty Davis and Michael Redgrave. Um, and anybody that's a Betty Davis fan should jump at the chance to find, uh, to, to revisit something that's pretty obscure in her, her filmography. Uh, this, of course, was made after uh, the very underrated but excellent The Anniversary, uh, which was a Hammer production where she plays one of her uh, uh, over the top heroines. Uh, and also, uh, following this was Bunny O'Hare with Ernest Borgnine, a huge flop. Uh, so, Connecting Rooms, only film directed by Franklin Gollings, uh, based on a play called The Cellist by Marion Hart. Uh, Betty uh, lives in this kind of rundown shared apartment house that's run by Kay Walsh, of all people, who's kind of a bitch. Uh, Kay Walsh, of course, is in David Lean's version of Oliver Twist, uh, in Hitchcock's Stage Fright, and uh, The Horse's Mouth, among any other, many other films. Michael Redgrave uh, here is playing a fired school teacher, uh, and of course anybody familiar with Redgrave should realize that he's a very interesting casting considering one of his most famous roles is in The Browning Version where he plays uh, kind of a very strict, imperious school teacher. Here he's rather a, a pathetic man that we come to find may have been fired due to potentially pedophilia? It's not really hinted at. Anyway, he shares uh, He's in a, a, a boarding house uh, with Betty Davis, and the door that uh, splits the rooms doesn't lock, so they kind of bond over that. Meanwhile, uh, Betty Davis uh, is this uh, the, a street busker. She's a cellist who also has her own secrets. Everybody thinks she's going out to rehearsal, but she's actually playing on the streets. Uh, and she's being romanced by uh, Alexis Kenner, who is playing a man who aspires to be a pop songwriter, uh, and he's also uh, romancing a uh, singer played by Olga Georges Picot, who uh, in the 70s was in quite a few auteur films, including Woody Allen's Love and Death and Elaine Renee's uh, Je t'aime, Je t'aime. Uh, here she doesn't have much to do, but it's interesting that uh, she's in the cast. Uh, Betty Davis is cast against type, which I don't think quite works for this, as this vulnerable woman having these relationships with these men neither of whom are, they're both qu kind of quite toxic, to be frank. Uh, I find it interesting that the music was done by two people named Joan and John Shakespeare, who, uh, those are the names of William Shakespeare's real uh, father and sister. Uh, the man known as John Shakespeare was actually part of the British band, the Ivy League. Um, it was shot by uh, John Wilcox. Uh, it, of course, being based on a play, most of the monolo monologues do belie the fact that it was, but uh, I do appreciate that uh, London in 1970, they do open up a, a lot of the action in the film. There are a lot of uh, location scenes. Uh, Redgrave actually seems probably a little better cast than Betty Davis, but if you enjoy either of them, I'd say you probably enjoyed this film. Uh, I'd give it uh, two out of five stars, and Kino Lorber's release, uh, three out of five. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.